Hi everyone, I'm Johannes. I'm one of the co-founders of Container Exchange, a marketplace for shipping containers. I'm originally an engineer from background. I studied shipbuilding. Um, started my career at the Boston Consulting Group, where we helped some of the biggest shipping lines in the world reducing their cost of uh, of, of moving around containers. Um, and then I got my PhD in or my my Doctor of Engineering in uh, in in analyzing empty container flows. So you could really call me an, <laughs> an industry nerd or a nerd for the topic of moving around empty containers. So what is, what is uh, empty container repositioning? Empty container repositioning essentially is moving around an empty container. Um, there's roughly um, 170 million containers that are moved around the world with cargo every year. And that's to, that's to bring manufacturing goods to the customer, uh, semi-ready goods to the, to the factories, et cetera, et cetera. On top of these 170 million containers, there's another over 50 million containers that are moved around empty, so no cargo in there. Fundamentally, the reason is that um, at the point of discharging a container, so once a full journey is empty, um, there is no cargo at that point in time for that container to fill it with cargo again. So it has to be moved somewhere else where there is cargo again, essentially. So moving around air, everyone can imagine it's costing money, it's, uh, it's uh, producing unnecessary CO2 emissions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this, um, this moving around empty containers is, um, is also pretty expensive for the industry. If you look at the carriers only, so the shipping lines, the MERS of this world, they pay rough, almost between eight and 10% of their total operating cost is for moving around empty containers, over $20 billion per year for the industry, for that part of the industry alone. Why is that? Um, so um, there's essentially there's, um, there's two main groups of reasons for, 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 for empty, empty container repositioning. One is um, there's simply structural imbalances. So China exporting more to the US than vice versa. So that's pretty straightforward. No matter how efficient your container system is, there will always be empty containers piling up in the US that need to go back to China. Not much one can do about it. Um, but there's also a second reason for empty container repositioning, which is, which is more addressable. And this is kind of where initially the idea for the marketplace container exchange also came from. It's, it's what we call a company specific imbalances or time specific imbalances. Um, so Essentially, a shipping line um, has, um, has a lot of exports from, from China into Europe and less exports, vice versa. So they move the container with cargo into Europe. And instead of waiting for consecutive cargo out of Europe back to China, they'd rather reposition the box empty back to China to then produce the next very profitable move. This is um, fundamentally really driven by sales where for example, not in current crazy times of freight rates, but in typical freight rates, um, the freight rate from, from China to Europe is roughly double the amount than, uh, than it is from, from Europe back to China. So it actually, from an economic perspective, it might make sense at that point in time when the box is in, in, in Europe to rather get it back to China as fast as possible to fill it with another double valuable uh, cargo back to Europe. Um, it's also easy on the sales side to focus on the so-called headhold volume. So on the volume on the, if you have a trade, China, Europe, Europe, China, there's more cargo from China to Europe. Hence that's the headhold versus the backhold, the, the less frequent, uh, frequent, frequent uh, trade essentially. Um, it's easier to focus on additional headhold volume because there's just more cargo there. So it's easier for sales to focus on that. Um, forecasting also in, is in shipping is is difficult and not not supported by too much technology yet so if uh, demand forecasting essentially so if uh, if demand forecasts are bad there's more reason for short term positioning of containers so even even though i have a plan on how many boxes i may be needing um over the next two months this is this plan is not so not so accurate so i need to react quickly if actually all of a sudden bookings are increasing um, so I need to bring more containers into that location. Again, the reason for empty positioning, empty moving of containers to that location. And um, finally, or finally, and probably the, uh, the the least annoying reason of uh, of, uh, of uh, for container repositionings is um, is the is the the company's specific network. Trying to give you an example. So I'm uh, let's say uh, shipping line A has 
too many containers in Chicago. That's a typical place where there's too many containers. There's many imports into Chicago and much less exports out of Chicago. So they have way too many containers sitting in Chicago. And but because of the structure of this shipping line, so they have they only have three ways to 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 get containers out of Chicago with cargo. So they can essentially only um, fulfill demands for three directions out of Shanghai because of the network of, of, of that company, because they only have their, 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 their agents in, in its applications. Um, now, um, now, if there's no cargo on these th three routes, the only way for them to, to, to get the container out of, uh, out of Chicago is to move it around empty. Now, and that's kind of, uh, that's the hint, and that's also a little bit uh, where the idea for, for container exchange came from. If you now look at the whole industry, and not just shipping line A, all of a sudden, there's way more possible ways to get a container out of Chicago. So there's a fourth, there may be a fifth and a sixth route out of Chicago, which which potentially has um, has has cargo there. So there might be there there would be ways to 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 get the box out of Chicago with cargo. And um, and finally, and that's more of an operational issue or a process issue in 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 in, in, in many logistics companies. There's very really little, little visibility of the cost of uh, empty positioning. It's often assumed like a sunk cost, or it's a cost we have to we have to bear anyways. And um, if I um, if uh, it's in 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 many uh, logistics systems, it doesn't say what are or even in the calculation system for sales, it doesn't say what are the the estimated cost of um, of moving the box back empty. So I sell more cargo on that hole, but it doesn't tell me how much it actually costs to get the box back uh, back to where where I can resell it. And secondly. Most systems, it's very hard to get out of the system how many moves did we do empty last year. So there's very, we do see, or the company sees the overall cost and may even see overall cost of positioning, but it's very hard to pinpoint that. What can be done about that? What can be done about that in the industry? Essentially, our hypotheses or um, the way to change that to the, change that to the best uh, extent possible is to decouple ownership of containers and usage of containers it has worked in so many other industries where it doesn't matter where um, where the actual asset comes from um, for the for the person that operates the asset or that uses the asset so at the moment um, I take shipping line a again and shipping line a has their own containers so what they do is they um, they, they they move containers with cargo to location and then they need to get their own containers back to where they have cargo decoupling that, actually solves a lot of the issues that I, that I outlined earlier. So if, if I'm just renting a container for whatever person or purpose I need it, so if I, if I rent the container for that export from Shanghai to, to Hamburg, then I don't care about the, the other parts. I don't care about the repositioning back from Hamburg into, into Shanghai, for example. So I just drop the container in, in Hamburg, and then there is the next one that kind of it, this container again becomes free to everyone in the market, where even though I may not have an export out of Hamburg, there's another group of uh, shipping lines, freight forwarders or so, who might very well have, have an export out of, uh, out of Hamburg. There used to be concepts in the past, like the gray box pool and so on, which were essentially looking at uh, container assets between shipping or containers between shipping lines and wanted to pool these. And there's all tons of problems and all tons of reasons why it failed. So if uh, let's assume there's a, there's a pool of containers and they belong to five companies together. And if push comes to show, um, probably always the biggest company gets the last available container or the strongest or the one that pays the most. Whereas if you to totally decouple that, if you just say, I'm the one that operates a container, I'm the one that uses the container, be it a freight forward or a shipping line, and I'm the one that, um, that, that owns the container, then the one that owns the container just cares about making money on the container. So there will be a market price or there's a market price for what's the daily charge of the container. Is there a certain pickup charge, a certain pickup credit, depending on the attractiveness of a certain location. And actually on exchange, we do see that more and more. So exchange is a, is a marketplace for, for, or is a, is a, is a container booking platform essentially where there's container supply and there's container demand and then it covers all kinds of the process afterwards payment handling insurances and damage claims etc cetera, etc cetera. but what we do see is all of a sudden there's a market price for for a container out of shanghai and that's not for the ocean freight that's not for the space on the vessel that's really just for the physical steel box and right now these prices are crazily high but there's a market price around 1500 us dollars for a 40 foot high cube container from shanghai to europe 
and there's actually also a market price at the moment for and and most of the deals that 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 that, that, that are conducted actually run on that market price. And there's also a market price from from back from Hamburg into Shanghai, where on on average at the moment the person that that, that books the container actually doesn't have to pay, but he gets between seventy five and one hundred and fifty dollars per container that he moves back into Shanghai. So there is. There's a there's a there's a market price, and it doesn't matter who owns the container and who uses the container. Just those two parties agree on on, on on the price between the two. And actually, this works for 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 both concepts of container shipping. There is um, there's two two ways in which uh, which which a container or a cargo can be moved um, can be moved by by by, by shipping a container. There's the so-called COC carry-on container. So the shipper or freight forwarder actually books. Both the container and the um, and the vessel space with the carrier, and the carrier then uh, takes care that there's enough there's the container available, there's space on the vessel, and brings the box to to, to Europe. And um, there's also the other the alternative concept of the SOC, the shipper owned container, where the shipper or freight forwarder only books the space on the vessel with the carrier and brings his own or a rented container to uh, uh, to, to to the ship. In both concept, um, the the concept or in both cases. The concept of uh, of, a, um, of of decoupling actually works. So in the in the COC case, it's the carrier that, that that wants to get the container, and nobody cares what what logo it says on the carrier. So the carrier actually leases in a container. In the SOC concept, um, the freight forwarder, the shipper, is the person that takes care of, of renting that container. Container shipping will always um, result in uh, will always have one consequence of uh, the consequence of uh, empty containers having to be moved around empty. While there has been a lot of technology influx into the industry over the last couple of years, not too much has addressed the uh, has addressed the issue of empty empty positioning. However, um, what's what's getting us quite excited is that more and more freight forwarders and MVOCCs and also carriers are relying on third party equipment, so essentially spot booked spot booked containers for their for their shipments. So as we do see this trend currently kind of uh, accelerated by a severe crunch in crunch in equipment availability, we do see that um, that this uh, decoupling of ownership and operations or usage of a container will continue and will, will then potentially help uh, help help the industry in in solving at least a portion of their of the of their problem of, of empty.